No, no, no. Hold up. No fun music. The frivolities are over. It's time to get serious. The colonists tried to be civil. They wrote the most heartfelt letter to his majesty, worthy of a song by Adele. And how does he respond? He doesn't even read it. Situation probably also like a song by Adele. They tried being more drastic and had a little tea party. And the king stripped Boston of all of their rights. And now, now he sends troops to attack his own citizens? Really? <sighs> Guys, it looks like we've upgraded from an Adele song to a Taylor Swift song. The heroes who would save us assembled in Philadelphia in May 1775. No, not those heroes. These heroes. The Second Continental Congress. Their first order was to make George Washington commander of the military troops and allow him to assemble a militia to fight the British. But that's not all they did. They had bigger Brits to fry. The main goal was to write a document that would declare the colonies an independent nation and free from British rule. It would be called the Declaration of Independence, also known as the greatest breakup letter of all time. Altogether, 56 men came to discuss the document. All were important, but there were four who embodied what it means to avenge the oppressed. Benjamin Franklin was an ambassador and a diplomat. He possessed the ability to travel to other worlds or uh, other countries to negotiate peace. He was devilishly witty, charming, and very articulate. Also, he dabbled with lightning. John Hancock was the son of a wealthy shipowner. When his father died, he inherited the money, making him one of the richest men in the colonies. He used his wealth to fund many of the Sons of Liberty's activities. He also liked to make sure everyone could see his name clearly. George Washington wasn't actually present, but he was there in spirit. Busy fighting the British, Washington had a great deal of military intelligence and experience. One might call him America's first Avenger in the fight for freedom. Last, but certainly not least, was Thomas Jefferson. Beyond his intelligence, Jefferson was an extremely passionate man. Though generally quiet, when he spoke about liberty, he became furious, arguing feverishly with anyone who disagreed with him. Most tried not to make him angry. They didn't like him when he was angry. Other notable attendees were James Madison, John Adams, his cousin Samuel Adams, creator of the Sons of Liberty, and Patrick Henry, a very powerful speaker whom we've already seen. I guess they could be like Nick Fury, Hawkeye, Coulson, and Black Widow, or something. Jefferson was chosen to write the document. He based much of his argument for freedom off the principles of natural rights. Wait a sec, did I just say natural rights? Yeah. <sighs> okay, no more downer music. Yeah, that's better. Thomas Jefferson's intention with this document was to explain why the colonists needed to dissolve the political bands which have connected them with England. He explains that we are endowed with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. These rights are precious, and to protect them, governments are instituted among men, deriving their just powers from the consent of the governed. But governments are fragile, and when any form of government becomes destructive to these ends, it is the right of the people to alter or abolish it and institute a new government. Aw, John Locke would be so proud. And as if protecting your God-given rights wasn't enough to convince the skeptics, Jefferson then listed not one, not two, but 27 things the king did that made the colonists mad. From high taxes, to dissolving legislative rights, to saying he has plundered our seas, ravaged our coasts, burnt our towns, and destroyed the lives of our people. Jefferson successfully conveyed the angers of the colonists. But the end of the document is perhaps one of the most monumental parts. Jefferson writes, We therefore, the representatives of the United States of America, which is the first time the colonists refer to themselves as the United States of America in an official document. That's kind of a big deal. Now, it didn't get signed right away. There were some discussions regarding slavery, and others worried about going to war. But eventually, on July 4th, 1776, 56 men came together and signed the Declaration of Independence. Don't get too excited. 
Now while this document is awesome, and we celebrate its signing with fireworks and hot dogs, it didn't make us an independent country. You can't just say you're an independent country and then become an independent country. In order to achieve that, they would have to fight. And fight, they would. <laughs>